All right, let's figure out how exactly I'm gonna get this stuff pulled off. Hands down, the number one tool that I used and the first tool that I'm gonna tell you about was my chainsaw. This is what I did about 85% of the work with on this whole project. And here in the beginning, I just use it to free up the poplar log that I'm gonna make the canoe out of. And I use it throughout the entire project. See how this does. This obviously wasn't the most beautiful log in the world, so the first thing that I had to do was go around and cut off any branches that would make the canoe perform less hydrodynamically. <laughs> With the log now looking way more canoeish, and my supervisors breathing down my neck and watching my every move, it was really time to get to work. Got a hole in here. This plan might be, well, new plan. This is gonna be the top of the canoe. I'm gonna flip this thing on its side and we'll keep moving. This step of chainsaw mill really would have came in handy, but I just wanted to go through and make sure that this log wasn't completely rotted out on the inside. And thankfully it was just kind of bad on the top where that branch was going through. Then I just had to go through on the last three quarters of the log and I just cut it up into these little bits like this. And then I used my second tool, my maul, and I was able to bust out those pieces I cut. Next up I used the saw just to kind of go through and roughly mark out the edges and the front of the canoe only because I didn't want to get my saw too close to the edge or front or back and end up having it blast through the side and completely ruining the project. Once my parameters were set on the outsides I was good to go making these long straight lines vertically and then horizontally I went back through and made some smaller cuts in order to make some pieces that were about like this. But if all the pieces didn't quite cut out like that, I was able to get my maul and just start hitting them really hard, and I was able to make some progress. And then the third and final tool that I used on this project was my chopping axe. Dang it. The axe was great on those pieces where I just didn't need quite as much brute force that the mall offered. I was able to get into smaller sections and cut out pieces a little more precisely. It was lunchtime for my bovine supervisors and this concluded the first day of the project. I ended up having four hours in it total and this was the second day where I came out and I ended up putting one more hour of work in where I pulled out these pieces and just made a couple more final adjustments. All right, I'm finally making it somewhere, but I did just do a test where I sat down in the canoe and it's not quite wide enough. That's my hand right there on the right side and there it is on the left side. So it's still got some mass that I can take off. Really, this is kind of crooked, but like I said, I'm just trying to do this as quick as possible. So I'm gonna go back through, cut some more out of this wall out, I'd say right here in this section. Not bad. 
Next up, I'm gonna get a little bit more out of the front right here. And I think we're gonna call this thing done. I don't know if I wanna go much lower or much wider outside of just doing this. So let's just cut this part out. And I think we're gonna call this thing completed. With the final cuts and modifications made, the only thing left that I had to do was carve in the Country Boy Chronicles C insignia, and the SS Country Boy Chronicles was ready for its first launch. I sat back, basked in the glory of my canoe, and I came back the next day and we loaded it up. Which was a little bit harder said than done. Due to the fact that I was trying to go so fast on it, I didn't take a lot of the weight out of the sides or the back, and this thing had to have weighed at least like 500 to 1,000 pounds, within that range somewhere. And while there were some imperfections on the canoe, they actually came to my aid whenever it came time to loading this thing and getting it moved. I just used those old pieces just to shim it up, and I was able to move it without strapping it. It was about a two mile drive to the pond where I was going to launch it at, and I ended up making it no problem. All the hard work was completed. I had the canoe carved out and ready for its maiden voyage. All I had to do was roll the canoe into the water and test it. But for some reason I didn't account for the mega weight and negative rolly effect that this canoe was putting out. So I went to plan B, which was chaining it to my Tacoma and pulling it to a steeper launch point. Dang it, I wish that would have went better. It was the moment of truth. Do I have a seaworthy vessel, or is this thing just going to flip me into the cold December water? <sighs> Boots are soaked. All right. Come on, baby. And I'm not quite sure how it happened, but I ended up having myself a seaworthy vessel. However, if I didn't really concentrate, I was going to just completely roll over, so I kind of had to lean to one side a little bit, but keeping that in mind and making my strokes even on both sides, I was able to stay upright the entire time. Well, all right, overall first impression, other than the lean, yeah. Other than having the lean, it's working pretty darn good. I'm gonna try to make my way back to shore here before I flip and get sucked. Whoa! Drone is about dead. I am soaked. Pretty good, uh, pretty good test run. This video is fun to make. Probably would have been smarter not to make it in the middle of December. But if you guys enjoyed the video, give it a like and subscribe to the channel. God bless. And so let's have a good one. See you next time.